Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 47. If we look at our objects folder inside of our data folder, I've added a new folder called samples. And this will have a few different 3D files that store the uh, materials differently. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on loading in the blue cube no texture 3D file. Now, this file does not have a texture associated with the object but it has a material and the material has a blue color. In the next tutorial, we are going to focus on the uh, loading a disk texture. So that's a texture on our disk. It's external from the file, such as the nano suit object that we were previously looking at. But first let's look at the um, no texture 3D file. So what we're going to do is currently our um, texture is associated with our model. Let's go to our model and let's take out anywhere where we are referencing the texture. So for example, there we'll take out set texture. We will remove um, it from the arguments. Take out set textures definition. Uh, remove the texture here. Remove it from the arguments. And when we go to draw, we will no longer set the shader resource for that texture. Now let's go to the game object and similarly we will no longer take in the texture as an argument and we will no longer pass that into our model when we call initialize. Let's go to our graphics CPP where we were initializing the game object. We no longer need to pass in the texture. Let's go ahead and change our path to this new um, texture. So blue, what was it? Cube, no texture, .fbx. And let's see, if we run this now, not sure if I missed a texture reference, but we will see in just a moment. Well, I guess I did. So in the game object initialize, oh, in the definition, need to remove the texture here. Let's try this again. Okay. So what we see now is instead of that grass texture we were using, we are seeing the texture used uh, to render the font at the top left. It's, I believe that's the same texture that we are seeing on the cube now. So what we're going to do is in our mesh class, we're going to store a vector of textures um, for all the textures associated with this particular mesh. So there are a couple things that we will be adding. We'll be adding a texture class and a color class but before we add the texture class, let's add the color class because the texture class will use the color class. So we're going to create a new item. We're going to call this uh, color.h. And then we're also going to add a CPP to store the definitions. Alt color.cpp. Let's go to show all files. And we're going to drag these up to the graphics folder. Uncheck that and go to the color header. Now, there are a few things that our color class will have. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a type def for byte at the top so I don't have to include the Windows header. Uh, and so I can use byte. Byte's unsigned char, but I'm just going to reference it as byte for now. Now, our color, the way it works is let's go down towards the private variables. We're going to have a union between um, an array of bytes of size 4, so 4 bytes. Each byte is 8 bits. And then we're also going to have a union with an unsigned integer. Now the reason that we are doing this is because um, it, it makes it very easy. If we want to do a comparison, we can just compare the integers between two colors. If we want to assign one color to another, we can just assign the color. And at the same time, if we want to get the alpha or set the alpha, we can just reference the alpha element in the array, and same with the blue, green, and red values. Now we are going to use the format um, RGBA, as you can see from the naming. So red will be the first element, then green, then blue, then alpha in this array. Um, the functions are pretty self-explanatory. If we go down 
to the uh, namespace for colors. We're just going to have some where we could define colors that we might use around uh, the engine. For now, I'm just going to have an unloaded texture color, which will have 100 for the RGB and A. So keep in mind, these can be anywhere from 0 to 255. So this is kind of like a, a gray, having all of these values the same at this uh, at 100. We're also going to have an unhandled texture color. This should never occur, but we're going to have it just in case so that we can identify when it does occur. Now let's go to the definitions for the CPP. And just a quick overview. So our default constructor will just set the um, color integer to zero, which will assign the RGBA values to zero as well. Um, this is where we could take in another color value and assign our color. Uh, we could take in the, when we take in the red, green, and blue, we will default the alpha to fully opaque, so 255, the highest possible value. When we take an RGBA like this, we will manually assign each of them. Um, if we take in another color, we'll just copy it. The rest of these are pretty simple. You see, when we get the R, we get the first element, set the R, we set the first element, get the G, second element, and etc. So now let's look at creating the texture class. The texture class is going to be a bit more complicated. Let's create a new header, and we're going to call this header texture. And let's create a new CPP. We're going to call the CPP texture and show all files. Let's see where these are down here. Let's drag these up to the graphics folder. All right, uncheck that. All right, and inside of our texture header, let's lay out our texture class. We're going to need D3D11 to use our DirectX 11 types like shader resource view. We're going to need uh, the WRL client so we can use COM pointers. We're going to use our new color class. We are going to, I guess we don't really need strings yet, so I'll take that out. Um, for We're going to use the ascent material, and the reason is because for our textures, we're going to store the texture type. Now, currently, we've only been looking at diffuse textures, but in the future, we'll look at things like specular textures and other types. Next, we are going to have, uh, we're going to keep track of our texture storage type. So we have invalid, which it should, this is just what we're going to default it to when we create a new texture until we assign it. None is going to be what we're looking at in this tutorial because we don't have a texture for the cube that we're loading. In the rest of these, we will go over in the next few tutorials. Um, it's worth noting I have not been able to find a 3D file that ASIMP can load that uses non-compressed textures. So if you do find one, if you could let me know, that would be great. Um, because I have no way to test these. Uh, since I can't find a 3D file that ASIM can actually load that has them. Now next, inside of our texture class, we're going to have a constructor that just takes in one color value. So we, we're going to use this for this example because when we have our cube, we need to generate a texture for this cube to use, and it's just one color. So we'll just take in that one color and we'll generate a one-by-one one texture that has that color for our uh, shader to sample. Also, if we're generating a texture with color data, but it's not one by one, we'll have another constructor where we take in the width, height, you know, a pointer to the color data, and then, you know, of course, the texture type will also be required. And also, we're going to have uh, functions to get the type, get the texture resource view, and get the address of the texture resource view. In our private, we're going to have functions for initializing a one-by-one one color texture, which we'll be utilizing. And then we're going to have a function for initializing a color texture from color data. Then we're just going to store our actual texture, our texture view, which we are used to seeing the texture view. That's what we were using before. And then we're going to store the texture type. So let's look at the implementation. Let's go to the texture CPP. All right, and inside of our CPP, we'll obviously include texture header. We're going to include the air logger in case uh, we need to throw any exceptions. Our constructor that just takes in a single color, we will call the initialize one by one color texture function. 
for our constructor that takes in a pointer to the color data with the width and height, we will call initialize color texture. Get type just returns the type. Get texture uh, resource view returns a pointer to the resource view and then get the resource view address returns the address of that pointer. When we call initialize one by one color texture, we're just going to call the initialize color texture and pass in one for the width and one for the height. And then we are going to pass in the address of that single color value that we sent in. So it all really revolves around this initialize color texture. So what we are going to do is first assign the type, and then we are going to create a structure for our 2D texture. Uh, the format is going to be R8G8B8A8 because we are going to have eight bits for each value and we want it in RGBA. And then the width is just going to be the width we pass in and the height is the height. We're going to have a pointer to a uh, ID311 texture 2D. Now the reason that we're doing this right here is if we hit F12 to look at how this is set up inside of uh, D3D11 header, you'll see that the texture inherits from the ID3D11 resource. Now we're storing it as a resource, but we can't, it's not, it's undefined behavior if we pass in the resource when we call create texture 2D. So instead we have to pass in the pointer to uh, the texture 2D. And then after that, we have to cast it to our ID3D11 resource. When we create our texture, we are going to set initial data for it. So we need to create this sub resource data where we set the pointer to the memory for that data, which is just our color data. And then we need to set the system memory pitch, which is just how long one row is. And I just had size of color here, but this should actually be the width of the texture times size of color because it's how many bytes for one row of that texture. Next, we will call create texture 2D and we will com error if it fails. And we are going to be storing that texture in this pointer to the 2D texture that we had created. And then we need to cast it to our uh, resource view, which is just called texture in our class. Next, we need to create the shader resource view. So we need to create shader resource view description. And for the view dimension, we are using texture 2D. And then for the format, we are just using the same format as the texture used. And we call create shader resource view. We pass in the uh, texture, we pass in the shader resource view and the get address of on the texture view where we want to store this. And then we com error if it fails. So we are just going to finish this tutorial with defaulting to a gray texture because it's already, it's taken a bit longer than I had expected just to cover implementing the texture and color class. So let's go up to our uh, mesh header. We are going to include this uh, texture header. We're also, we're going to create a vector of textures inside of our constructor. Well, first we are going to add in copying our textures on the copy constructor. Then inside of our mesh constructor, let's add in a argument to receive the texture and then add that to the definition. And then we just need to copy that to our members textures. And when we go to draw this mesh, what we are going to do is we are going to go through our textures. And if the textures type is diffuse, then we are going to set that as our shader resource view. Start slot zero, because it's just the very first shader resource. And we need to get the uh, address of that resource view. So we will call get texture view resource view address. And then next where we are calling the constructor for our mesh and our model CPP. We're just going to change this. Let's see, where is that? We're going to change this 
to, for now, we'll just take in a uh, unloaded gray texture. We'll pass in the device, the color for uh, unloaded texture color, and then the texture type is diffuse. Now let's pass that into our mesh constructor. Let's see if this compiles. And if it does, we should see a gray cube. Okay, and we see a gray cube. So it's not the blue cube that I initially thought we would cover in this, but it is the gray cube. So in the next tutorial, we are going to look at actually loading in that color for the blue cube and setting it instead of doing it like this. And then in the tutorial after that, we will look at loading textures from the disk, like how we uh, need to do for the nano suit. After that, we will load embedded compressed textures and then embedded index textures. Uh, something else I want to mention before I end this uh, tutorial is I've been talking a lot to a user called SlideyBat, and he has uh, his own engine he's working on. I recommend you check it out. He's doing some pretty cool stuff. And it's a bit it's a bit ahead of the tutorials. So uh, it's just nice to have a resource to look at when I guess when I'm slacking on the tutorials and it's taken me a while to pump them out.